my name is Nikki White and I'm the Acting Director of Sport at St. Stadion's Girls College. Today I am so privileged and I'm so excited to be meeting for the first time as well as talking to Michaela Barter, who's our alum alumna of 2013. Michaela, am I correct? You are correct. Sure, that's like years ago now and Michaela has been chosen to represent South Africa in the Olympics for diving the Tokyo Olympics so Michaela welcome and I'm really really super super honored and stoked to meet you and I'm looking forward to our chat that we're going to have for the next couple of minutes yeah me too me too so Michaela briefly um we just a little little bit of a background history where did you go to primary school we know your college was at um at St. Stidians. and um after college after St. Stidians, where did you go after that uh, I am uh, born and bred since Studian's girl. I am um, yeah, from grade naught to matric. Oh wow, Michaela, that is amazing! Gosh. <laughs> yeah, we, we loved the school, so we we just kept on kept on going. Um, and my university, I was recruited to the University of Houston in Texas, and um, I spent four and a half years in America before I uh, moved to London. And what did you study at, at, at Houston? I studied uh, a pre-medical degree, so um, mm -hmm. it would be the equivalent of a, a BSc in biology, um, okay. like okay. a biomedical sciences. And did that studying allow you to have enough time to, to dive? Because I mean, diving, it's, 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 yeah. a, it's quite a hectic, hectic schedule. It is, it is very hectic. Um, and that's sort of why I went to the States and that's why a lot of uh, elite athletes go to the States is because um, the universities there sort of um, craft your academics around your your athletics. Um, okay. And they always tell you you're a student athlete, but really you're actually an athlete student. Athlete student. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I could train twice a day while I was there, get all my weights in, everything, um, and still got a Bachelor of Science alongside with it. So sure, congratulations. That's amazing. Thank you. And just onto what you said where you could train twice a day and get your weights in. So I mean, so I've I've been involved in diving at Saints since 2016, sort of just heading it up and you know, getting more and more knowledgeable knowledgeable about it. But it pretty much to an ordinary person and a non-diving person looks like Oh, you jump on the board once or twice, somersault, tuck, fall in, and, and out you go. And that's your session, like three or four jumps on the board. What does a training session involve for involve involve for you? Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> it gets a lot more difficult the more somersaults you want to add on. Um, and just to control that board is, is also um, quite difficult. So you need to be able to have the, the sort of strength to hold the board and ride it in the right way that you want to. Um, so all of my sessions, we will always do at least an hour in the gym um, and then at least an hour in the pool. So you're always doing half gym, half pool. And um, yeah, lots of strength and core work. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I'm sure core is quite important, especially having to control your body as well as the board. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have that, you, you can't really reach the levels that you want to be reaching. Yeah. So it's not just one or two jumps and cheers, you go home. <laughs> no. I would say we, we cross train a little bit. Like okay. um, we, we do a whole bunch of things. We do some running, we do spinning, um, we've done some swimming, we lift weights, obviously, we do gymnastics. Um, mm. uh, yeah, we have a ping pong table in our dry gym. <laughs> so lots of things. Lots of things, yeah. And I think cross training is important. Um, because with diving, it's not just falling into the water. Um, you need strength. You need to be fit. You need core. You need flexibility. Um, you know, and you need to be totally conditioned. So I think the cross training there is, is a hundred percent correct. You know, it's part of the part of the art of the sport is to make it look like it's effortless. And it does look effortless. <laughs> <laughs> I envy you, ladies. <laughs> Michaela, why did you choose diving? Why not netball, tennis, hockey, or did diving choose you? I I chose all the sports. I, I honestly, I think I tried every single sport that Saints offered. Um, That's amazing to hear. Except for squash. I never played squash and equestrian. Okay. <laughs> uh, all of the other ones, I pretty much tried all of them. Um, and I was a gymnast until I was nine and um, decided that I didn't want to give my life to gymnastics. 
lol. Um, yeah. And so <laughs> you just done that now, but in the water. <laughs> and so I decided to quit gym and just threw myself into every sport that Saints had. And um, the diving coach at the time, Lena Woodard, she yes, yes. sort of took me took me from PE, and she was like, "Right, I think you're going to make a great diver. Come on to diving. Come to diving." And um, yeah, just took me under her wing and um, basically made me into sort of what I am today. She, she, I'll, I have to give her a lot Molded of Molded you, yeah. Yeah. I must say, so when we have the grade eights coming to, to um, sort of orientation day, we ask who are the gymnasts, who are the dancers, who are the ballerinas? Because they, those, um, the, the, the students that, that, that do those sports are easier to mold into um, gymnastics. I'm uh, sorry, to, to, you know, from a gymnastics background to mold into, into diving. Definitely. Definitely. Um, and I mean, yes, you do have to have some sort of mental component too. Definitely. Stand on um, that board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's so much easier if you have those foundations already. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, Michaela, the first time you represented South Africa, when was the first time and, and how did that feel for you? Yes. How old were you and, and where were you at your, at, you know, at what age? Yeah, I was 14, uh, grade nine. And I remember it so clearly because I had to make this decision whether I was going to go to Bush School um, right before my first international competition. And um, I decided that I was going to go to Bush School right before my first international competition. And um, yes, uh, I think because of that decision, my the whole competing experience was a little bit daunting because I wasn't quite prepared for it. Um, but at the same time, it was sort of the reason why I kept going because I was exposed to what diving could be. Um, and it was held in Tucson, Arizona. And I was introduced to how university was in America and how, um, yeah, just, just everything that I could aspire to. And so from that point on, I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to take diving very seriously because this is like, this is what I want. Um, to, to get to a place like this so so that was a huge motivation for you to where, for, to where you are today definitely definitely so bad experience but at the same time very motivating and very inspiring but at least you got bush school in which in itself is just a most amazing experience so. yeah I, I don't have any regrets about that no regrets no that is awesome yeah. to hear um Michaela what does success look like to you mm -hmm. I like this question um because I, I think that for me, so my, one of my favorite quotes um, is success is the ability to go from one failure to another without any loss in enthusiasm. So for me, success is um, learning through failure, learning through struggle. So even if you're struggling, even if you failed, if you've learned something from it, for me, that, that is success. That is success. Um, yeah. So oh, and a I really, think a really profound quote. Yeah, I I didn't I didn't make it. I think I think it might have been Winston Churchill. Um, but I just I just love that idea of of you know one small step in the right direction, and um, no matter how slow you move, you're always moving forward, and so you're always going to reach um, an end point, whatever that end point is. Sure, that is that is amazing to hear. Um, <laughs> so diving. While it is an individual sport, you on the board alone, unless you're doing synchro, um, you know, with, with, with a partner, you're on the board alone, you're up there in front of the crowd and everyone's watching you, but yet it's still a team sport. Mm -hmm. So what are the non-negotiables that, that underpin being um, a good teammate? What, mm -hmm. what do you expect from your teammates? What do you expect yourself to give to the team? That are, it's a non-negotiable. This, this will take place. Yeah. Um... I think you have to try to get to the top, but at the same time, get to the top and also bring other people with you. So um, instead of like trampling on other people to get to the top, it's it's more, hey, I'm I'm going for this goal. Let's go for it together. How can I pull you up with me so that we can go together? Because you're absolutely correct. It is very much a team sport. And um, half the reason why COVID time wasn't so difficult for me was because of my teammates um we all had the same goal of making the Olympic games and 
we all knew how to get there and um yeah just being being able to work out together um over zoom and um just have this one singular goal uh, very very important so yeah with, so what you're saying is that encouragement i mean without encouragement and without putting others you know in the same boat as you and pulling and working together then yeah what happens to a team that doesn't take place mm -hmm. that's exactly. very exciting um have you had a big learning curve in your diving career it could be at under nine level high school college where you're at now has there been any point in your diving career that you've actually taken something from it and and learned and used that experience Yes, um, I have had a lot of ups, but also a lot of downs in my diving career. And um, unfortunately, I think the, the failures tend to stick with you a bit more than the successes. Um, and I think one of the biggest things that I've learned through my diving is what I like to label um, enthusiastic perseverance. Um, and this kind of goes along with the quote I gave you, but um just being able to persevere through failure but not just by showing up to training um but by like persevering with your body and also with like your spirit um so you know just showing up but also with the mindset of i can do it so yeah, yeah. if you want like a particular moment when i realized this i guess do you uh, have a particular moment Sort of, yes. Um, so it was the end of my university career, 2018, and I had um, failed to qualify for the top level tournament that I could have qualified for, uh, for four years in a row. So every year for four years, I tried to qualify for this tournament and I had failed for the fourth time, fourth and final. I didn't get, like, there was no other chance. <laughs> Um, and uh, I just remember feeling absolutely, uh, you know, just so, so down about it. And, um, I had finished university and so I, I, at this point I could decide, okay, am I going to go to med school now? Is my diving finished? You know, have I really given it everything I could and it just wasn't worth it? You know, um, like, is this sort of the cap of my potential? Let's put it that way. And, um, I decided that I actually had more potential than than what I had shown, and so yeah, I decided to keep going, and I moved to London, and um, I yeah, I just really had this 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 thought of I don't believe that I've reached my potential yet, and I believe that I have more. Um, and I mean, Saints is a is a method Methodist school. Anglican? Methodist, yeah, oh. Methodist. Yeah. So I'm going to add this in there because I am Christian. But um, I just had this this thought of if God is all powerful, um, then there isn't any limit because He He can do anything through me, you know. So so I thought, okay, I could be limited, but if God is all powerful. I can do unlimited things with him if I walk alongside him. So I was like, cool, I'm going to keep going, try and make the next Olympics. Um, and here we are. So, yeah, perseverance. Wow, and strength <laughs> of character. Goodness me. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes it does take those those knocks to make us sit and reevaluate where we really are at and, and to dig deep. And how, dig, how deep can you actually dig? Yeah, it's it's sort of a, how much do you really want this? You know, yes. if, if it doesn't come easy, you sort of have to evaluate how much do I really want this? You know, so it was good. It was a good moment. And it's, and that's something I think that you've taken with you and you often possibly reflect on it. Yeah. You know, like a tough time you think, well, I got through that and look at me now, you know? Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I mean, more recently now, I think just learning to believe in myself versus other people believing in me. I think there is a difference in that because yes, yes. I've had a lot of people tell me my whole life, you have potential, you have potential, you have potential, but you really have to sort of own that. Um, mm. Yeah. It makes a huge difference. Sure. That's a beautiful goosebump story there. That's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> um, apart from making the Olympics, yes. what are the highlights? In your diving career have you had? Yes. Um, there's two ones that sort of stick out to me. Um, the first one would be December 2019. 
um, when I won Africa Champs. So um, that was huge for me because that meant that I qualified for South Africa their first spot at the Games. Um, it didn't necessarily mean that it was my spot, but yeah, it just meant yeah. that South Africa had a spot. Um, mm -hmm. So that was huge for me. And um, the second one would be in university um, where I won. Uh, there's a set of competitions called conference championships, and um, I ended up winning diver of the, the competition over all three boards. So that one was also a big one for me. Um, but those two, yeah. And when you say all three boards, is that one meter, three meter, five meter platform? Yes, that is one meter, three meter, and platform. Wow, mm -hmm. oh, that, that's awesome. <laughs> I don't tend to dive platform, so that's also why it was a big one. <laughs> Jesus, what is the difference between platform and um, a three meter? Obviously, um, the platform's stationary. Yes. Um, so there's no give. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. So platform is a general term for any board that doesn't move. Um, generally, if you get to elite level, you will only be competing 10 meter, which is double the one we have at Saints. Yes, that's, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's hard. I know, but that's you hard. generally have more than just one platform. You'll have a set of platforms so that you can okay. train your, like you'll do two somersaults off of the three meter platform, then two and a half off the five meter, and then you'll go up to 10 and do three and a half. So you work your way up, yes, yes. yes. And so we don't actually have a complete set of platforms at Saints um, to be able to make a really good platform diver, which is why all of us are springboard divers. Okay, so, that makes sense. Yeah, we just got the, the, the one five meter one, yes. So both me and Julia are springboard divers and we are the only two representing South Africa. So I think if we want to create platform divers in the future, we need some sort of platform setup we have all yes, of those ones yes, yeah yes. going from the three meter the five meter the seven right up till, till the ten mm -hmm. okay minimum at least two so five yes. meter and ten meter yeah yeah um but yeah it's it's a whole thing because you have to dig the pool deeper no it's huge uh, <laughs> it's a massive <laughs> the construction involved with that and engineering techniques of that is yes. on a different level completely yes um, um and three meters obviously bouncy and it's a whole different event Yes. Yeah, no, yeah. definitely. So they announcing the spring back, sorry, they're announcing the Olympic teams mm -hmm. um, and the announcement's imminent. Did you have an inkling? How did you feel when it was announced? Like, what are your, I mean, there must have been a range of emotions going through you. Like you're waiting for the team to be announced and are you in or you're not in? Talk us through that. How, how, how was that experience for you? Oh my gosh, I think I had all, all the emotions on the spectrum. <laughs> um, so actually, I sort of heard twice that I made the Olympics. So the first time was, was more intense than the second time. Um, but the first time that they told me I had qualified was when um, World Cup didn't look like it was going to go ahead, which is the second qualifier. And so Sascock had decided that if World Cup doesn't go ahead, that because I won Africa Champs, I was going to go to the Olympics. And they told me this. And I got it in an email one morning, just woken up. And I sort of sat up in bed and I was like, what? And I like, jumped out of bed. And actually, my first response, this is so funny, I got, I was, I got on my knees. And I was just like, what? Like, yeah, you know, um, and I was, I was praying, but I like I barely, I never get on my knees, so that, that was crazy. Um, and then the second time was more of a, a relief because they sort of came back to say, okay, actually, World Cup's going on, you have to dive. Um, and so me and Jules went to World Cup, and Julia did really well, and I didn't quite have the best meet of my life. So, okay. um, but because I had already done well at Africa Cup, it, it was it was fine. Um, and so the second time was was more relief than excitement. Yes. <laughs> Gosh, yeah. and to see your name written among the you know South African team members, I mean, from all our sports, it's it's your name written there. It's like goosebumps in the tummy kind of things, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I and everything. Think it's only something that really hits you afterwards, to be honest, because yeah. we're we're still you know head down and training at the moment. So um, I think it'll hit me after I've been to the games. <laughs> reflection back hey that was me yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um 
so all of us in our life, we have different role models, different mentors, be it teammates, parents, friends, colleagues. Is there any one particular person or even a group of people that you aspire to, that you look up to, that you are thankful to? Um, anybody who, I mean, I'm sure you've got a, a, a quite a few, but who jumps at you, you know, who, yeah. Yeah, um, it's funny. It's, it's, I would say it's my coaches, not all of them, but um, probably about two or three of them that have really, I, I wouldn't be where I am in my sport without them. Um, and so first and foremost, the one that I'm, co that I'm diving under right now, um, Jane Figueredo, she, she, I would say is probably at the moment, my, my biggest role model mentor supporter. Um, and she, she recruited me at the age of 17 from South Africa. And she's, she's sort of, um, just kept, kept believing in me, kept saying, you know, I recruited you for a reason. I've, I've, you know, you have potential. I, I see that, you know, so, and she shows up every day to training with a smile on her face, enthusiastic, no matter what, you know, even if I'm struggling, she put, she stops smile on her face and she's like, you can do it. Even if she doesn't awesome. think I can do it. <laughs> so yeah, her for sure. And then Lena Woodard, definitely. Um, and also Imran Metz, who was uh, our, another Cincinnati's coach straight after Lena. So okay. those two together, yeah. I think they were the first people who made me believe in myself because, yeah, I just remember a lot of things that they used to say still, still comes still back. Comes to mind. Yeah. And yeah. That, that's very special. I think an athlete's relationship with a coach is first and foremost. They almost seem to take place of, of family because you actually spend more time with your coach mm. than you do with your own family. Definitely. So yeah. It's very, very important, that relationship, I think. You know. Yeah. Sure. Um, attending the Olympics, your preparation, how's that going? Do you fly straight from London to Tokyo? Do you come home first? What is the sort of the timeline and, and the movement until you march on with the rest of Team South Africa? Mm -hmm. So, uh, luckily, I don't have to fly home because <laughs> that would be a bit of a, a weird a bit of a up and down in a yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm flying straight to Tokyo, and um, actually this week I'm joining in. So the team that I train with right now is the Great Britain Olympic team, um, and I've been training with half the team for the last three years. Um, and right now, the rest of the team has come to London, and so we're all doing a sort of pre-Olympic. Um, training camp, which is super fun to be part of. So, um, in essence, we'll be competing against your your club, your teammates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and they all leave Saturday. Uh, they leave as a team, and I follow um, the next day. So, I'll be leaving Sunday, and then I have ten days in Tokyo to get used to the pool, get aware of where I am, mm -hmm. you know, choose my springboard. Um, yeah, and then I compete on the 30th of July. Cannot wait. Very <laughs> exciting. And with, with which events are you competing? Are you doing any synchro? Are you, um, which are your main events that you're okay. competing? So I'm actually doing just one event, and so is Julia. We okay. are both competing in three-meter springboard, women's, obviously. And um, we had an opportunity to maybe go for um synchronized diving too mm -hmm. uh but it was just too difficult to coordinate because she lives in the states and i live in london uh, yes, yes. um it, yeah you 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 want to be training pretty regularly with the person that yep. you're going to be doing synchronized diving because yeah, you, you you need to feel them you know what i mean you need to really be in sync with the with, yeah. with the person yeah uh, so it's, not we... hey? it's not impossible um apart but at the yeah. Olympic games yeah, it's a different <laughs> So, Michaela, as it sounds, um, we are exceptionally proud of you. I mean, yeah, it's, your name is being thrown about here all over and with our Saints diving team and the girls are all so super excited to, to watch you. Mm. Is there any message that you've got for the, the up-and-coming little divers who start diving in grade three, for any of our Saints community and, yeah, and the girls' college? Any message you have for them? Yeah, um... I think I think it would be what I told you about uh, enthusiastic perseverance. So you're gonna fail in a sport like diving. You're gonna fail. 
um, and just to be able to look at look past the immediate failure, look past it and look at, okay, what is my end goal? Um, and so sort of every failure that's beneath that end goal doesn't really matter. It just makes you stronger. Um, so yeah, be perseverant. That's <laughs> awesome. Uh, Michaela, it was so super to speak to you and it was just, it was such an honor for me to, to meet an Olympian. I mean, everybody in the sports world, we all aspire, you know, like when you little, little child and you've got these pipe mm -hmm. dreams, I'm going to run for the Olympics. I'm going to, but you've done it. You've achieved it. And that is just yeah. absolutely awesome. It's been such an honor and such a pleasure speaking to you. Yeah. It's and nice we wish you the best and the, and the greatest, all the luck in the world. Um, mm -hmm. And just know that we are hundred percent rooting for you. Thank you so much. I've really Super. enjoyed our chat too. <laughs> Super. Thanks, Michaela. Sure.